Hello, and my name is Pete Rushmer, and I'm your host today of A Half Dozen Things podcast. A Half Dozen Things is a podcast for business owners just like you. Whether you're an underdog hungry for success, or you're already smashing it, but want to continue to level up, we are here each week for you to get insight and learning from the very best in the business. No fluff, no BS, and no self-proclaimed gurus talking about how easy business or life is. Hello and welcome to A Half Dozen Things podcast. If you're listening to this on the podcast, if not, you may be listening on live right now. And I've just realized that my phone is on loud, so I better turn that on to vibrate. So welcome to this A Half Dozen Things. I've asked, I've asked ChatGPT what the six most common self-limiting beliefs are. And it was quite interesting, actually, what came out. So one of the things I've been doing over the past couple of weeks, I've had loads and loads of ILM uh, Level 3 Leadership courses that I've been running. And this is something that comes up when we uh, when we discuss ILM Level 3 and we talk about leadership potential. And we talk about people's personal development and self-development, particularly as we start to look at their careers and how, how we can progress and develop ourselves. Now, limiting beliefs affect... affect pretty much everybody and they're super super common right and what it is is it's a thought or an attitude a limiting belief or a decision is a a thought or an attitude that holds us back and prevents us from reaching our full potential okay in its simplest form and what that is is when I listen to other podcasts and I listen to some of the psychologists that I listen to speaking and those kinds of things essentially what they commonly say is that if someone thinks something enough times or they're told something enough times, they end up starting to believe it. And they kind of decide that whatever that is, is true. Okay. And uh, we tend to pick up limiting beliefs from our childhood when we're much younger, potentially, we're a bit more uh, fragile, and we need to create some beliefs to help protect us from the world around us. And what we do is we end up holding on to those as we get older, and potentially more resilient and stronger, and more able to deal with the world and have more confidence. Uh, however, we still believe these old these old beliefs that potentially can hold us back and cause us to behave in certain ways. And what happens is, is when we uh, when we experience the world around us, often there's events that occur that we have no control over. You know, thing, things happen, but we get to choose how we respond to those. But the issue is, is our brain can play some tricks on us. It it filters the experiences that we have through these beliefs and decisions that we've made, which can then create. Uh, the way that we behave, the way we choose to react, the way we choose to do stuff. And sometimes if those beliefs don't serve us very well, then um, then that can hold us back. It can potentially not, not help us create the best outcomes for ourselves, which, you know, ultimately is what personal and professional development is all about. We want to create the best outcomes that we possibly can and try and help ourselves to succeed. So it's good to know what those limiting beliefs are. So hopefully I've gained some attention and hopefully you're interested to hear what the six most common self-limiting beliefs are according to ChatGPT. And I've sort of had a run through them. And do you know what? Based on some of the coaching and support I offer uh, some of my uh, people in, in my coaching practice and certainly in the leadership training I offer, these, these are probably actually pretty common. ChatGPT has probably hit the nail on the head. And what it will have done is it will have gone away and it will scrape from the Internet in all its different guises. But ultimately, uh, these are the six that ChatGPT uh, feels are the most the most common, according to the Tinterweb. And if it's on the Tinterweb, it's got to be true, right? So uh, the first one is I'm not good enough. So lots of people do struggle with inadequacy and the belief that they're not capable or worthy of success. Now, there could be numerous things that have helped somebody along the path of starting to believe that they're not good enough to do something. It might be things that parents or teachers might have said when they were younger. Um, It might have been the way that they've experienced the world around them. And uh, that can be quite a limiting challenge. If you approach the world as in you're not good enough for stuff, you're going to come across some challenges, right? So I'm here to tell you, you are good enough. And uh, that maybe if you recognize that, if you resonate with feeling sometimes like you're not good enough for stuff, Maybe there's something, uh, some work there that could be done to uh, help help develop that and help understand why you feel that way and um, understanding that actually that 
but just because you previously believed that it doesn't mean that it's necessarily still true now and uh, and that maybe there's alternative options maybe there's alternative decisions that you could make about yourself the second is a really really common and that's a fear of failure okay so people are super paralyzed by um, things that prevent them from taking risks and pursuing goals and those kinds of things so essentially risk is the likelihood and consequence of something occurring that could cause some level of embarrassment or um, looking stupid to other people. And the fear of failure stops people from doing incredible things that they could be doing. So, for example, the amount of people I speak to, and this is a really, really common one, the amount of people I speak to that go, you know, if I ask them, well, what would you do if you had the choice of doing anything with your life? What would you, what would you choose to do? And they choose to do something totally different than what they do now but they're too scared to take some action and go ahead and try and do that and maybe take baby steps towards it because they're just scared of looking silly or um, failing and other people other people making some level of judgment about how they got on. So that means people miss opportunities and it's uh, it's just a real shame when that happens. So um, what would you do if you weren't scared of failing? What is it you would do? And um, that's a good question to ask yourself actually. Because sometimes, you know, even I might I might come across on camera like I'm super confident, but even before I go live like I do now, there's always that element of fear around it. And actually, I quite enjoy that, which is which enables me to come and uh, and record these lives and to record the podcast and those kinds of things because I quite enjoy it. And actually, do you know what? Actually, I learn most from failing. So I think that's probably the key learning for me is. I, I've been scared of failing too. And even now, there's some things that will scare me from uh, that are failing. But what I find is that the stuff I learn, I learn best from failing. I don't I don't learn from winning. I learn from failing and losing and from the from the losses. So um, you know, if you if you come from a place of self-mastery and wanting to develop and nurture your skills, then uh then it's good to not be afraid of failure. So um and I've got a few book recommendations around that as well. So feel the fear and do it anyway is one of them. Another great one, actually, by the way, a very uncommon recommendation, but 50 Cent co-wrote a book with Robert Greene called The 50th Law, which is about fearlessness. Um, fully recommend that. A really, really good book by 50 Cent. Yeah, the same guy that bought you candy shop. So um, on to the third, the third uh, of the six um, self-limiting beliefs most common self-limiting beliefs according to chat gpt is that you i don't deserve success and some people believe that they don't deserve the success they don't deserve happiness that sadness is just the next move away and that that's what they deserve in life and um i'm not i'm not obviously belittling that at all because that's a, a common a common belief for people but not feeling that they are deserving of success and that's normally going to be a deep rooted uh, belief and challenge again that's that's potentially been instilled from from a young age and can cause um, can cause people to to not want to go and pursue success they they don't feel they deserve it and this can create self sabotaging behaviors as well so just as a good opportunity comes along people don't don't grasp the nettle um it's a good saying that grasping the nettle but some people are so scared and it does link to being afraid of failure often as well hi it's pete from flagship partners we're proud to sponsor a half dozen things podcast flagship partners help their clients become safer greener and greater through a range of consultancy and training services we offer audits through to risk assessments contracts through to support with managing your culture all the way from mandatory training through to management training as well so if you need any support please do get in touch with flagship partners today so uh, not deserving of success some people do self-sabotaging stuff to prevent that from happening so if you recognize that and you feel like you don't deserve success again it might be something just for you to, to consider meditate on and and think about for the future so the fourth one is that you're too old i'm too old or i'm too young age related beliefs can really limit opportunities feeling too old to take that next step or to do something because you think, well, I'm a bit past it, for example, that's going to hold you back. Why not just do it anyway? What does age matter anyway? Age is only how you feel. And it's the same with being too young as well. You know, I remember I remember as a young lad uh, going to my boss at the time and asking for a uh, increase in responsibility. I wanted to uh, take on a bit more responsibility. I wanted to take on a, a leadership type role. I was only in my early 20s and um, I was told at the time I was too young. And um, 
I could, I could have taken that on board. I could have taken the feedback, um, but I felt that being too young wasn't wasn't a good enough reason not for me to be for me to not push on and push forward. So, um, you know, feeling too young can undermine confidence and discourage people from taking on responsibilities. I say, why not push your skill set anyway? Why not give it a try? Um, because essentially age is just a number, right? And so one 20 year old and one and another 20 year old are going to be totally different. They're going to have different capacities. So I don't think an age is a good factor as to make a decision as to whether you're too old or too young, unless of course it's drinking, in which case you need to be 18 or over. Okay. Uh, so there's my little public, public health warning. Uh, the fifth, the fifth, uh, may, uh, fifth biggest or most common self-limiting belief according to chat gpt is i can't change so some people just believe that their personal traits and behaviors are fixed they're unchangeable and that can hinder their personal development and stop them from embracing a growth mindset where they can adapt and overcome challenges and evolve as a person as well um i certainly resonate with this one particularly from when i was a bit younger and i used to i used to choose to smoke right and um I used to try and quit and I used to fail at quitting and I was a bit scared of failing. So sometimes I'd protect myself and go, I just like it. I don't want to quit smoking. And uh, I would also go, I can't change. Look, I can't change this. And that would be me kind of throwing the towel in and, and lighting up another cigarette and carrying on again. But you know what? I've been 10 years now. I think it's uh, I think it's thick end of 10 years that I've not smoked for. And it does prove that you can change, right? Um, people change all the time. They give up alcohol. They give up drugs. They give up sweet foods. Um, certainly this year I've needed to change. I got told by the doctor that I had a metabolic syndrome and I needed to give up sugar and sugary sweets and snacks. And largely speaking, I've been able to do that. I still do. I still have some sweet treats in moderation, right? I'm not an absolute saint, but at the same time, I've been able to change my diet. I've been able to evolve. So having that belief that you can change is really important and it helps you nurture that growth mindset. Uh, and if you, if you don't believe you can change, that's going to start to hold you back. And again, it's a common thing I see uh, with people. So certainly one to reflect on, thinking about not being able to change. How are you going to change? It's, uh, it's definitely an important thing to think about. Good. And the final one, which is super, super important and super common, because when I speak to people, I, I, see, I see this on a regular basis. I hear this on a regular basis. And the sixth one is that people let others' opinions define them. Uh, they rely too much on external validation and let others' opinions dictate their level of self-worth and this can become a major limiting belief and certainly one that resonates with me or a past version of me that I've tried to uh, develop away but certainly it's something that I used to believe when I first when I first started working for myself and when I started um, wanting to grow my career I thought that success looked like um, you know a, a blue Lamborghini and, and success might be that right um, but I remember just fixating on like a helicopter or a supercar a mansion, all these things, right? And all of those are essentially successes externally referenced. It isn't referenced within me. It isn't referenced based on my level of satisfaction or how happy I am, how content I am. Um, you know, that those things are potentially success. Or I ask you to start to reflect on what success looks like for you. Because um, thanks, Mags. It is a nice wall, isn't it? I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Mags and I had... So Mags has dropped in the comments. Appreciate that. So Mags has, uh, did knock some of the artwork that I chose um, for the wall in my office. Uh, so it's nice that she's commented on that. Um, but yeah, other other others' opinions do do define people. They do help. You know, essentially, when you are looking for success and you are looking at achieving goals and you set goals in your life look at them and check are they externally referenced or internally referenced because ultimately success is your option it's your decision it's down to you it's not down to others perceptions or others beliefs so those people who say i just want to be successful i want i want people to know that i'm successful you know if that looks like fast cars and fancy houses and designer clothes and those kinds of things it may not reach the level of satisfaction and happiness that you may think because it's externally referenced by other people and there'll always be the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So if any of those six uh, chat GPT led self-limiting beliefs resonate with you, um, 
have a think about them. If you want some help with those things, that's something that I can do. Um, certainly in my coaching practice, I'm able to help people overcome their limiting beliefs and start to understand them a little bit more. And certainly the nuances around their own um, around their own belief systems and belief mechanisms and help them start to achieve whatever success looks like for you and yourself rather than other people. Okay, uh, I hope that's been interesting. Um, I hope it's worthwhile. Have you got any feedback? Are there any others that have been missed? What's ChatGPT missed out on? What would you what would you recommend as a common uh, limiting belief or maybe something that comes up for you when I've talked about those things too? Anyway, take care now and see you on the next one. I really hope you loved today's episode. And if you did, please make sure you subscribe and listen out for future episodes too. Please do share it across your social media channels. We hope to reach more and help more people. If you want to find out more about me, my name's Pete Rushmer. You'll find me across any social media channel and my business, Flagship Partners. And we're your partners in success across your business. Thank you. See you again soon.